What's up, everybody? Welcome to Flux Harmonic. I'm David Wilson, and today we're back with another, another live stream where we try to make something cool from scratch, and uh, today is uh, no exception to that, where we're going to try to actually build some uh, automation to automatically publish new builds of the game we've been working on, Crash the Stack, to itch.io every time a new commit is pushed to the repo. So there's a few different steps involved here, uh, as well as some... Let me check this thing real quick. Uh, some new work that I did that might need to be cleaned up. So we're going to have a little bit of fun trying to get this working in the span of, you know, another two hours or so. Uh, before we get into it, I'd like to say hello to Luis and Daigo, who I saw there in the chat. Thank you very much for being here today. Um, all right. So updates since last time. I have finished more or less the first pass of the design for mesh build, which is great because now we can actually start using it to build these projects. Uh, and I've al already updated all the various projects to use it. Um, I'll go into that in a little bit more detail when we start looking at the project file for Crash the Stack, and I'll explain how all that works. Uh, also, while doing this, I've added more functionality to Mesh Process, uh, specifically around being able to launch processes um, both synchronously and asynchronously, and also read the output of a process into a string, which was which was important for Mesh Build because to um, use a C library dependency, like let's say GLFW or OpenGL or any of the other dependencies we might end up using, uh, you typically use a program called package config to find the path to the include files and the library files for that given dependency. So since it's a, pro a process we have to shell out to, I needed to add functionality to mesh process to make it possible to call a package config for a particular package and get those flags back to be used in the build. I haven't tested it 100% yet, so we're going to have to try and make that work a little bit on stream here as well, but that's fine because that's uh, some more, more part of the fun. I also added a new mesh IO module for very, very basic functionality to read in, well, read from a stream in general. So in this case, we're actually using it to read from the process output from a package config, but it's also like the basis for reading files and writing the files, et cetera, which is going to be something we're going to need pretty soon anyway. So good to get that started. And I, I spent probably about, I don't know, about 45 minutes uh, at some point yesterday uh, starting on getting Mesh ported to Windows. So if I want to make games, I'm obviously going to have to target Windows. And, you know, just being able to target Windows in general is useful. So I started the work to port the existing Mesh code to Windows using msys2 or mingw, however you want to call it. Um, there's some complications there because I've already been using uh, Linux specific headers or functions that I needed to find Windows replacements for, but I've got it mostly working. I just need to you know, fix a couple things here or there. Uh, so hopefully soon we'll see mesh running on Windows and be able to produce a game build there as well. All right, so uh, today, like I mentioned, we're gonna try to automate the publishing of our game project to uh, itch.io. If you don't know about itch.io, it's a nice um, sort of game marketplace uh, primarily for independent developers, but I guess really anybody can publish there. And um, it's kind of set up well for indie games for various different platforms. Um, and you can you can sell games there, or you can give games away free, basically whatever you want to do. And uh, the, the nice thing about it is they have a really cool tool called uh, Butler. Let's see, itch Butler, which makes it really easy to butler. Yeah, that wasn't the right way to type that. Uh, to publish updates of your uh, game or publish builds of your game from a command line tool, this, this Butler tool. So uh, what we're going to do is install Butler on GitHub Actions to push new builds of the game after we build it with Mesh Build. So that should you know put us uh, where we need to be for uh, making builds of the game on Ludum Dare next week uh, available as I'm building it. And it, pretty much anything else that we're working on on this channel, I could start you know publishing builds. I mean, not to itch, maybe to itch, but uh, either to itch or to other places using the same kind of functionality. Um, so I do have an account on itch where I've been publishing old builds of the previous incarnation of the game. If you go to fluxharmonic.itch.io slash crash a stack. Oh, wow. I, it's because I'm not logged in. Um, I'm going to have to make that page public at some point in the near future here. Uh, let me see if I can. Let me hide my screen for a second to log in. Oh, can I log in with GitHub? Hmm. I don't know. Let let me do this really fast. You can take a look at my beautiful face while I try to log into this this website. And you can at least see what the page looks like. I might also need to copy some kind of key from there at some point. I have to put a captcha in. Come on now. I'm not a robot. 
Okay, we've now logged in, and I'll put the screen back on. Let's see here. Okay, so yeah, I've got a uh, crash the stack page on itch that needs to be published basically before you can see it. Let's see, can I just click that, make it public? Public, I don't really care anymore. Here, I'm just gonna save that so you can see it too, view page. Okay, so these old builds here are from the old incarnation of the game. Uh, you could probably download it and try it if you wanted to, but uh, we're not going to use those. We're going to do the, the re-implemented version of it using Mesh. So uh, that's where we're going to try to publish something today. All right, so uh, that's pretty much it. So let's talk about the tasks. Uh, first of all, I need to sync all the code repos because things are a little bit out of date right now uh, and also clean up any mess I made from the commits earlier. Um, I wasn't able to get everything fully tested but i had to push commits anyway to be ready for the stream so we may have to uh fix a couple things here and there but it shouldn't take very long also i need to download the latest build of mesh cli from from the uh, ci system um whenever we get that running correctly again uh basically to get that the latest build that we can use for building uh the uh crash stack locally and also we need to verify that this new package config functionality that i added is working uh, finally, we need to use the new download mesh CI task, which I forgot to mention. Let's see, mesh lang uh, CLI. Let me pull up this page and then I'll use it to bounce to the other one. So I made a GitHub action that makes it easy to download builds of mesh into GitHub actions for use in CI. I basically took an action I wrote for something else and just repurposed it for this, uh, this purpose. So we're going to use this to uh, pull mesh into the crash to stack CI configuration, and then use that for building crash to stack. Uh, then we're gonna try to build a working distributable of the game uh, on GitHub Actions, and then hopefully try to run it and see if it works, because it's not gonna make a whole lot of sense to publish the game if it doesn't run. And then we're gonna try to try to set up Butler on CI and uh, attempt to publish a Linux build of the game with it. So there's a lot of stuff to do. Um, we don't have a whole lot of time, so let me just try to get right into it and see what happens. So first of all, we're gonna update all of our repos here. I need to pull this one for sure. And then we're gonna go into the depths folder. Um, that one's not called the same thing anymore. Do we have anything here? Okay, cool, we don't need that one now. Um, the engine folder, that could just be pulled and updated. Okay, so that's probably good for now. This compiler here, I'm gonna delete that because we're gonna pull it again. Um, Yes, we're going to kill that buffer. I just realized maybe there's something else I needed to do. Okay. That's going to pull it to the right place after I've changed this. Depths slash uh, mesh lang slash compiler. Okay. And I also need to update this path here as well. Depths slash mesh lang slash compiler. All right. So... That should be everything. Let me see if we can just get it to build locally here, um, just to make sure. So I'm gonna use uh, Geek Shell uh, pure-m manifest.scm and then run build.shell. Okay. Substratic.h no such file. Oh, okay. Yeah, I need to update the build script. So we're gonna use mesh build in a second. I just gotta make sure everything else is gonna work first. Whoops. Build.sh. Um, compiler slash include depths slash substratic slash include no no slash engine slash include that should do it. Let's try to run this again. Uh, undefined reference to substratic library init. Um, I think we want to have. I think it's lib.c here, so I'm missing just a couple things that need to be updated. All right, so now if I were to run a bin slash what? Crash stack. Uh, texture load undefined variable. Interesting. Should have been pulled in. Let me see. Oh, you know what? I bet I need to rmrf on um, bin here. Let's try that and then build it again. Hey, Gavin. Let's see, let's run crash stack now. Does it work? Ah, okay. We'll, we'll keep moving. Uh, so Gavin says, this is a really random question, uh, but have you ever looked into a Lisp scheme that has something similar to Go routines? I know Clojure has a better one-to-one -one implementation, but I can't find any other. Um, scheme, well, any Lisp that has uh, the concept of uh, continuations, you could implement 
basically go routines in it. Um, scheme implementations often have continuations. Lisp implementations sometimes have them. I'm not sure what SPCL has, but at least with scheme, when you uh, use continuations, you can basically do nonlinear con control flow and implement something like coroutines uh, pretty easily. So yeah, that you could do that for sure. It's just c continuations are kind of mind melting at first, and I'm not an expert on them, but uh, I am considering adding into the language. Uh, the more I sort of look into it, the more I think it might be possible to retrofit it into the language uh, as it is now. So uh, yeah, pretty powerful feature, but also uh, kind of brain busty at the same time. Um, let's see, it doesn't have texture load. That's interesting. I wonder if I go into depths, substratic engine, include, uh, what? Yeah, okay, so maybe into the source folder, then lib texture. I'm adding texture module init. And then what about uh, source main? Did I break something here? I'm doing the library init. Ah, what about build.sh? I may not be setting it as a dev build. Yeah, that might be the problem. So if I say dev build, it may or may not be the problem. We're going to find out in a second. Also, the module load path. Did I set that up right? Ah, depth, substratic engine modules. Okay. Oh, that's why. All right. So that didn't get shown. Makes sense. Now we're going to rebuild this. Actually, I probably need to remove, let's see, RMRF bin. We're going to run this one more time. And then the game should run in theory at the end. Um, we're on the crash stack. Boom. There we are. Okay. So at least we have it running again locally. That's a good sign. Anything we need to commit as a result of this? Let's see, um, update build.sh uh, due to substratic library changes. Uh, Gavin says, I've been implementing something like that with clcont, uh, clib for continuations, but the pain is integrating them with threads and channels without a ton of overhead. Yeah, if the whole language isn't sort of made for that, then it will be a problem, I think. Uh, let's see. So the next thing is, let's see, we got that first task done, sync repos and clean up any mess I made. Well, I don't know how much mess I still have left to clean up, but we did sync the repos. Uh, next, download the latest build of mesh CLI from CI. And now that one, I think we need to uh, fix up a little bit. Let me check out mesh lang CLI and uh, see what's in the CI history. I think it failed the last time I tried to run it. Yeah, so it failed here. And it was in sanity check. I think it didn't actually build it. So um, linking mesh. Oh, did I not update? Target dist config release. Config release, that should have worked. You're not distracting me, dude, don't worry. Let's see here. So we created the static library, we linked mesh. Um, in theory, it should have gone to the dist folder. I don't know why it would be saying no such file or directory. Let me see what I did in the, let's say mesh right here. Is that the one? Uh, yeah, so, okay, I've got some things here. I probably need to stash. Let's pull origin master in, and then we're gonna try to run this too. So I'll go down to mesh um, build.sh. Okay, and then ls uh, bin boot. Okay, then bin boot mesh. Could not open file boot modules main.msc. Oh, I did not use the debug flag. Interesting. So rm rf bin. Oops, did I? Ah, oh, come on. Okay, so this time we're gonna get it. Um, all right, so we're gonna try to run that one more time. I think it should work. Okay, cool. 
Now, what happened before is that it did not build its own dist. So let's try that now. We're gonna say um, build dist config release. All right, so we got a little bit of a problem here. Object free, collect garbage, and VM free. I got a feeling this has something to do with the process launching that I added before, because now I'm returning process objects. Um, unknown address, collect garbage, sweep object, object free, line 353. Let's go into, let's see, source, uh, no, no, depths, mesh, compiler, source, object. What did it say, 353? Uh, 353 GG. Okay, so we're still, I, I had problems with this before, which is kind of strange. And pointer type refunk. I don't know, that shouldn't even be a, a problem here. So it's a pointer dereferencing problem. So one of these things it's, it doesn't like. Pointer, pointer. So let me just be a little bit more um, specific about this. And we'll try to run it one more time. So build, no. Yeah, I need to do this again, unfortunately. And then we're gonna run build disk config release. Oh boy. I may have to skip that one for now and come back to that later. I, this There was like double free issues before. Something weird is going on with this. So maybe um, maybe what I'll do is just go ahead and free it no matter what and see if it helps. If it doesn't help, then we're going to have other problems to deal with, but that's fine. Or let's see, if, it's, if it is managed. Yeah, all right, let's see what happens. And did it rebuild? Yeah, okay, it rebuilt object IH, good. Uh, object free, still at the same point, 353. Pointer type, so we're checking that's null. And pointer type free funk. If somehow Same problem. Gavin says, if you're interested, me and another Lisper are working on a repo filled with benchmarks on similar topics, so it's all CL focused. That's cool. Benchmarking is something that I need to start doing on this project. All right, let's see. This, this happened because I'm... Um, adding uh, another pointer type in management and uh, something must be amiss. It's not telling me that it's uh, a user after free or some kind of heap overflow. It's, it's basically reading on an unknown address. Let's take that one out too. Let's just see what happens if I just remove both these things. All right, so maybe what I need to do then, so 353 is still complaining about this line. I'll just take this line out. I mean, what else can I do here? Let's just uh, do this whole thing. And we'll free it anyway and see what happens. Okay, so now it seems to have worked to figure out why the following line is crashing. Okay, so now, let's see, ls uh, dist? No, mesh is not even there. So why is the dist build not working then? This is gonna be in project.msc. We have our dist build here. 
Oh, okay. I got a couple process starts. Process start. This needs to be process start sync. I changed a bunch of stuff. All right, so scheme mode. And then we're going to pull this in. Whoop, there we go. Okay. Now um, I'm going to run this again. All right, ls uh, bin release. Not even there. What the hell's going on? Huh. Oh, I know what's happening now. Oh, man. <laughs> I got a lot of instances I got to clean up now of this. So um, all of the places where I'm sending arguments to a command, I'm going to have to individually pull out their um, arguments into individual strings. That's kind of nice, though, because like in cases like this, I don't have to do string append anymore. I can just directly drop the arguments into the uh, function. So that does help some stuff. I won't have so many uh, string append calls. So I also need to go and look into, you know what? Oh, okay, I'll leave that there for now. Um, I need to look into uh, build dot, let's see, build dot msc, uh, scheme mode, process start sync. All right, so every one of these needs to be updated. That's okay. So even git clone needs to be two strings now. All right, so git clone, repo URL. Come on. All right, good. Uh, don't need that anymore. Local path. All right. Hopefully that's going to work. Same thing for wget here. We can take that out. Take any of the spacing out. I'll tell you why this is uh, necessary in a moment. Just got to make sure it's going to work first. Okay, so let's do that. And then archive path C. Okay. Here's another one. It's nice to be able to get rid of all the individual string appends because that's a lot of function calls that we can now get rid of. Path resolve, let's leave path resolve there. You can also take this uh, space out. Package config. I think this one is correct because I wrote it after the change. This one can be fixed. Told you there would be some mess to clean up. I knew something was up. Okay, so we got that. We're going to get rid of that line. Same for this guy. So the reason why this is necessary is because I'm change, I've am i changed the way that I invoke uh, processes internally. Now I'm calling the exec functions that are like uh, syscall functions in Linux directly instead of using uh, popen. And because of that, when you send arguments to uh, a process, you actually have to have them as separate strings, not a single string anymore. So if you've ever seen um, APIs for a given uh, uh, language that have uh, some of the process launching functions that will get, let you give a full string including arguments and then others make you separate them into specific strings then that's probably why uh, string join okay we're gonna leave that one are we done yet okay I think we're done so let's uh, try this one more time I'm gonna try to run build for release we're gonna look at uh, bin release nothing's there still what the hell's going on can I say LSAL? Is there anything in there? That just doesn't make sense. Because I'm actually compiling things. Unless unless it's not even running the process correctly. All right, let me think about that for a second. I need to go check that... Uh, Things are getting sent correctly into the process. Hey, Fade. So we're going to go look into, where is it? A for loop, I think, that I have in here. For, come on. This is the one. 
No. Process start inner. Okay, here we go. So for each one of these, I just want to print out. So print. Um, arg. Or no, let's do this. Um, Printf uh, run program. And then for this string, we're going to print um, argvi. Just want to see what's coming through here. Put a space after. And then at the very end, printf and then a new line. Hey, Porv. All right, cool. So now let's uh, build it one more time using the bootstrapping script. Uh oh, okay. What happened here? Process.c. What now? I could have swore I included that in this file. Include erno.h. Pretty sure I did that, but maybe I forgot to check it in. All right, so now um, let's try to run this one more time. Yeah, okay, so now we're not getting the, the output in real time. I need to add parameters to those functions for this. So this explains it. I think something was wrong here and it wasn't rebuilt or something. But uh, now it does seem to be running things. This wget is gonna take a little bit of time because it's gonna be downloading uh, muzzle C. So we'll have to wait for just one moment for this to finish. But uh, this is, so while this is going on, I, I can show you a little bit about what we've done. So in, uh, project.msc here. Um, you have syntax to define a project with, you know, high level metadata like name, URL, version, description, etc. But you can also say what your dependencies are. And here we're saying that we have two dependencies, one which is the muzzle toolchain and the other is the uh, mesh, <coughs> excuse me, the mesh library called meshlang slash compiler. So this is actually the name of a GitHub repo like meshlang slash compiler on github.com. Uh, and this, both of these two things are actually functions. Uh, it looks like it's part of a document, but they're actually function calls that return closures that can be run to clone these dependencies. Uh, there's other stuff baked into what a dependency is in the, in the build system where you can have like, you know, logic for updating dependencies, et cetera, but we haven't really gotten there yet. Gavin says, does it support dependency versioning? Uh, not yet, but that is the intent. Uh, probably it would just go based on git tags. So I'm not going to have any kind of like uh, centralized repository for packages. It's just going to be, you know, GitHub repos effectively. Uh, also for configs, these are like the uh, compiler flags that you might need to pass in to, um, it's taking longer than I expect here, kind of weird. Uh, these are the compiler flags that you, or, or C flags or whatever you might need to pass into the compiler for building C code and anything else that you might want to pass in there. You have like the name for what the config is and the flags, etc. cetera. Um, and these can be invoked on the command line with the dash dash config parameter. Then you have your targets, which are actually what cause uh, certain things to be built. So like the main target here basically says it builds the CLI program. And then it has a list of steps. Steps is a function that takes a list of functions and returns a closure that calls all those functions. Um, and then uh, each of these returns its own function that runs the functionality here. So it's basically just calling a function that returns a closure that is uh, configured to run whatever step this is. So it looks like a document, but really it is actually code every step of the way. So I'm pretty happy with that. You can actually see here that uh, you can do inline lambdas as well to uh, do certain steps. Since I don't have a, um, uh, what you call it, a function yet for this kind of building uh, distributables. So this is busted, something's wrong here. Ashraz says, given the recent, recent dependency chain attacks, pending commits by, might be better. Yeah, I am thinking about that as well. Um, Gavin says, why not have the version number in the package description? Probably do need that, I just haven't gotten to that yet. All right, so um, something is wrong with running that process. It may not be completing somehow. So uh, let me double check what code I wrote for that. We may not end up getting to all the things we were supposed to today, but that's fine. Okay, so I'm looking for result. Let me write some stuff out here. So status is on status. So we can see what's going on there. Uh, what else? I probably should not 
here yeah let me do this too i'm gonna go into uh run no start enter right i'm gonna change the default pipe config to just inherit because i need to see what's happening in standard out uh inherit let's see what this does now oh uh i need to rebuild okay so now let's run it whoa what is happening hello address sanitizer is getting really upset and i can't even cancel it uh compiler no compilation kill compilation can you kill it you can't kill it can you okay proc ed Is it starting itself over and over and over again? What's happening? Oh, this is V-term. Let's kill the shell. What the hell, man? That was really strange. A lot of segmentation faults in the call programs. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I couldn't even get the output to tell what was happening. Let me think. Doesn't seem to be a good way to deal with that um w get see let me just make sure i'm running this correctly okay and then in process.c come on process.c there we go What are you even happy about? This card's qualifier, so okay. So we were in this function, trying to run the program. We ran process start. Wish I could get that output. All right, maybe I should just use it in uh, compilation. So what we're going to do is uh, run compile. Actually, let's go back to the main top level folder, compile. So we're going to run build.sh dash dash debug. And then we're going to run uh, bin slash release slash rash, no, uh, mesh build dist dash dash config release. Um, what? Oh, I'm in the wrong folder. Um, should be there, isn't it? Oh, I have to run the boot one. Okay, fine. Bin boot mesh. Okay. All right, there we go. Finally. Good. Now we can see what happened. All right, so uh, status, <coughs> excuse me, status is negative one, tar, <coughs> excuse me, ZXBF. So it seems everything that I run is crashing. Uh, based on process start, process.c line 77. So what did I do wrong there? Process.c line 77. Okay, exec VP, uh, seg V on unknown address. So I must have passed in something wrong to this function. Program path, program path, uh, process start. That seems fine. Arg V zero, that seems fine. We already know what it is. Oh, did I free something beforehand? No. Maybe I should skip freeing it for now. Still didn't help. Uh, object free. Does your... Oh! I think Ashraz has already honed in on the problem. So, yeah. I need to do plus one. Thank you, Ashraz. I forgot about that aspect. So, um, the very last item needs to be null in that list. So, um, arg v i uh, arg count, right? I think equals null. 
the last argument must be null so that uh, exec, which one I'm using, exec VP knows when to stop argument. Okay, so let's try this and see if it helped at all. Okay, so it did do something different this time, which is good. Um, process start enter, 177. Keep buffer overflow. So, oh, wait a second, hold on. Our count plus one, who knows? Redirecting output to wget log. Okay, so I think it's running this time. Because now it's telling me it's redirecting output, and that must be because I've uh, stolen the... I've got pipes reading it. So let's see, proc ed, is, did we see wget chewing things up here? Okay, okay, cool. So it, it is running stuff. And it's gonna, it's gonna run this twice because of how things are set up. I, I need to fix that. Okay, thanks, Ashraz. That was uh, the key in this case to making this thing uh, not completely throw up. So I'm going to go ahead and comment those lines out for now. And once this thing finishes downloading, then it should move on to the actual compilation phase. And then once that... Uh-oh, we got some more issues. Let's see. Hello, stop. Seventy-seven still. Segvian unknown address. It must be the same problem. What did I do wrong there? Status is negative one. Status is negative one. It looks like it ha wasn't actually working. Let's go to the beginning where it started choking. So maybe I do need those things in there that I had commented out. Let's just leave those in for now. Because <clears throat> we need a little bit of visibility into uh, what's happening. Oh, no. All right. So we're going to move a little bit further down. Seg. No. Nope. Just trying to find the, the next error in. In. Come on now. Move past last error? No way. Come on. It's redirecting because standard and standard and are not TTYs. Okay. Is that because I'm not running it through bin sh? Come on. Locally, I should probably take out this whole uh, muzzle part. Muscle part, because it's just... It chews up so much um, time. On CI is cool though. Okay, here we go. Finally, <clears throat> so we're at the point where we're trying to create a static library. We've been trying to compile things before. Now let's actually see if it, if anything got written out. Um, bin release, nothing, nothing in there. Okay, so all the calls of GCC are not working. Um. Apparently, okay, so I don't want it to be running muscle GCC at this point. Oh, I'm calling release. That makes sense. All right, let me try a different build configuration just in case. So we're going to try to run the debug config. Nah. Let's go with a dev config for now. Cool. So at least it stopped at a reasonable point. Error argument to zero should be a non-negative integer, GS, or fast. What?
Ah. Non-negative integer is zero. Interesting. So it's interpreting the arguments wrong somehow. This is something I did not expect to have happen. Okay. Well, it does seem to be what I'm passing in. If I go back to build the MSC GCC um, dash O. No, so that's going to be in my uh, configuration. So that would be in uh, project the MSC. Ah, uh, the C flags, all that stuff. It needs to be broken up now. That's not good because I'm just sort of inserting that in, and I currently don't have a good way to split that string up. All right, let me think about how I can get back to the previous behavior without too much pain, because we need to get this working. I mean, we could implement string split, but even if you did that, you'd still have to build a list of arguments to pass in and then use apply. So there's like a whole uh, cascade of issues here. Um, I suppose I could do it inside the C library. So at process.c, yeah. It is possible I could sort of fake it. But it does make things a lot more complicated. So in this loop, if I were to like check each string to see if there are spaces in it, yeah, I would have to make sure they're, they're not escaped either. Or with uh, quotes. Yeah, this really breaks my whole setup at the moment. Trying to think of what we could do in the meantime. String took. I forgot about that one. Maybe. Let's see. It's been a while since I used that that uh, function. I, I didn't realize that it, it that C had one. But now I remember from long, long ago having used this. Modified and broken into smaller strings. Uh, okay, so does it allocate... Anything do I need to worry about deallocation? I guess it would have to, wouldn't it? Okay. So then for any string that comes in, I would have to double check it. And it's only going to be a temporary thing so maybe the assumption should be that the string would be a whole string for now until i can fix this issue the right way so instead of doing this loop what i could probably do which is not good long term obviously but i could just use string toke to do this and this is in which header Probably string.h. Okay, so string toke modifies the argument. You must be using string to. Thank you. Okay, that, that's what I was wondering. All right, so care um, invocation equals string dupe. Str dupe. First argument is a care, not a const care. Cool. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Good point. I haven't been paying so close attention to those details. 
Okay, so we want to pull in as C string args i. Or we'll just say this. How about um, program or command string? Command string. And then uh, string toke on command string for space. Hey, Peter. So care arg v equals, and then we'll get rid of this one. And I'll have to go back and change all those lines that I just edited in the build script. That's okay. Not args i, I need args uh, zero. Command string, string dupe. Maybe it's, no. I'm not going to say that. Um, I also need to free that string afterwards. So probably if I use this free here, it will do it. And then this arg v of arg count, I need to have a... Let's see. Do I have that? No, I apparently I don't have the uh, man pages for the C standard library installed. Okay. I still need the last argument to be null. I'm not sure how I would do that in this case. Without a mem copy or something, maybe. Because passing this array or this uh, pointer should work, I think, except for the fact that there's no null at the end. No, it won't work because it's supposed to be an array of pointers. That's sort of what this is, right? It's an array of arrays. So string toke returns care token. Oh, oh, you have to keep calling it. All right, fine. While token is not null, uh, you create another token. So in that case, I need to have an array of tokens. I suppose this is fine then. Now this R count's not gonna work. Um, Let's just make it easy. Arg v, we're just going to make this like, let's say there, we have the possibility of 100 arguments. Uh, yeah, string token will add uh, null terminator to the return token. Yeah, it will for sure, but I think we also need another thing here. So um, arg v, so we're not going to do this. We're going to say while token is not null. And that's care, right? So care um, arg equals null. I think this should work. Arg equals string toke. And you call null the next time. Okay. All right. So the first one, I'm trying to think of the right approach for this. Uh, Louis says, aren't you working on a geeks profile for the project? It's the man, man page or the man program that you're missing. It's the man page. Yeah. I'm it, because I'm in a geeks profile. That's the reason why it's not showing up. So I need to pass in null every sub subsequent time that I call this. And that's why I can't make this a clean, simple while loop. I could do the first, uh, well, I guess I'll do a do while maybe. Okay, so string toke, uh, command string. And then uh, command string, what was the next thing? This, the character, right? Okay, that. So then while arg is not null, I think. Yeah. 
And we're assuming that we're always going to get a first one out of here. So then uh, we have the first arg. So we need to put the argument in the right place. And then we're going to call arg equals string toke and then uh, null as a parameter here at the very end. But before that, we also need to say arg v. Okay, so int i equals zero. Arg v of i equals arg. And then uh, the same thing as before, we need to, at the end, arg v arg count is null. All right, so here we're gonna say um, i, yeah, just, just i, right? I also need to do an increment on this. Can I do it right here? Is that, is that gonna be wrong? So then i, let's try that now. Something it doesn't like, probably in here. Um, printf arg is, actually no, let's do this, sort of like what we were doing before. And then arg. Still not seeing it. And I'm still not seeing, oh, probably because I didn't do a new line there. A read address, string toke, command string, is string dupe of args zero. This should be a string. String dupe also is a simple function, right? You just give it a string and it returns a string duplicated. Yeah. So this should be a valid character uh, command. So printf um, copied. Okay. GCC. Oh, yeah. Okay. Probably not dealing well with the subsequent cases. Interesting that this doesn't actually do anything, though. Huh. What is string token supposed to take? Is that a string or a character oh it's a string basically all right fine okay i think that moved us past that problem no input files fine that makes sense now so now i think we're back to where we can start processing parameters i just need to go back into uh build that msc and undo all these nice little changes that i had made All right, so we'll save that, and then run it again. Now what do we see? Still GCC, uh, I think we crashed somewhere along the way. Maybe the subsequent call to string toke, uh, process.c, line 177, null s. Went to the zero page, uh, 177 string token. No, I mean, that's what I'm supposed to pass, right? Man, string token. Subsequent call, we should parse the same string. String must be null. So what's the problem here? Oh, same problem, that. I wonder if that needs to be the same actual uh, location in memory. Maybe not. Oh, okay, here we go. Cool, that all looks good. So now line 195, the free it doesn't like. So let's just get rid of that for now. Okay, maybe it's actually running. I see output, so. Uh, you missed me uh, stumbling around trying to get this to run again. All right, uh, missing file operand. I don't care about the leaks. So we are running uh, commands correctly again now after I uh, reverted a little bit what I did before. But now at this copy operation, missing file operand. 
Let me check what happened in the output folder. So mesh, bin, release. Still nothing there. What the hell's going on? Oh, wait. I think it was dev this time. Yes. So it did. Interesting. Missing file operand. Let me check the dist. Uh, I think we're almost there. I think it's almost working. Did I make any assumptions that are wrong here? Ah, I didn't update this call. So string append. That sucks. After everything, we need to have a space. All right, the same thing for this uh, copy. Oh no, this one could just be a flat string. I don't like how I have to do this because uh, Lispy wants to give me trouble. Oop, see, gotta be super careful. Now, how did that one? There we go. So that should be fine there. Let's try it again. Um, I, okay, I think that might have done it. Let's go into the disk folder. All right, it did not copy the output file, but it did copy the module. So maybe I uh, are not specified omitting directory dev. Shouldn't be right. Project uh, config output path config. Interesting. Uh, do I see what the command implication was? CP bin dev slash. Oh, my mistake. That's supposed to be all one parameter there. Interesting. Okay. Address sanitizer is not happy, but whatever. Um, we leaked something from oh, the string dupe. But whenever I try to delete that, it yells at me. Let's try that again. We'll go back into process. Maybe I'm freeing the wrong thing. I should be freeing the uh, duplicated string instead. So uh, command str, I believe is the one that I called that. Okay, let's do that. Okay, at least no yelling at the end. I like that. So let's get rid of the printfs for now. Okay. And then we should be producing legit output at the moment. I think we might get caught up here in a second. So then dist mesh. Great. And can I do the same thing with the release build then? If I were to run this and then say release. Hmm. Something weird happened. Ah. Uh, Position independent object. <clears throat> Maybe I need to um, delete that folder. And also the one from depths, mesh link, compiler, bin, release. Try it again. I'm supposed to be using the right thing there. Build, no. Um, project, <clears throat> P-I-E. See, it's there. On release, <clears throat> okay, I need to take a look at the arguments again. Process. What did I do this time? Whoops, that was the wrong place. Uh, th this one right here. And also the new line, got that, okay. Is this the linking step, maybe? I might not have a space where it needs to be. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Jeez. FPIE. Oh, am I not in a pure environment or something? 
No, it's pure. But it shouldn't be pulling in this stuff. Ah, uh, that's why. Okay. My mistake. I need to run this in Geek Shell also. Geek Shell pure dash M manifesta SCM dash dash. There it is. Okay. Thank you so much, spammer. Uh, so Ashra says, um, muscle, muzzle plus live ACN may not work. Yeah, it doesn't work. I turned that off on the release build. Okay, so I think now we are back to having everything here in the disk folder. It should be good to go. So uh, I need to check in some stuff now to make this work. So let's check in. Unfortunate. Let's see. Uh, object. Remove uh, custom pointer object pointer free call for now due to issues and also wow the code formatter bit me also take the status out here any other printf that i added these yeah get rid of these i'm gonna leave this other code path uh halfway in yeah i can't block the restream bot unfortunately that thing's annoying anyway. It shouldn't be spamming in the, uh, the stream overlay. Run it one more time. Everything seems uh, like it's working. Then I'm going to check in this code. Process. Um, temporarily fix issue with uh, program arguments. Hacks, hacks, hacks. Ah, great. I got to do this now. I change my remote. Um, set the upstream to git at github.com slash right, colon mesh compiler slash no mesh link slash compiler. Okay. Now let's push it. I know not prune. Okay. We push that one. Uh, let's go into this level. And I need to fix this. What was different here? Process start sync. Okay. All that looks the same now. But I also need to go and fix one last thing in modules mesh build for package config. This one needs to use spaces. No, sorry, it needs to actually construct the line. So string append package config name. And then uh, the two additional arguments. That should be sufficient. Oh, process start sync sync. That's great. Good thing we didn't get there yet. All right, now I will uh, check that in too. So uh, uh, fix some issues related to latest changes. I don't know what to call it. We're going to call it that. And now what we're going to do is go to the GitHub repo and watch to see if the build completes successfully. Because that's where we'll be able to get a... Uh, whoa. Did it not push that? Yeah, it's a CLI repo. Why is it not actually pushing any action? Unless GitHub is once again having issues, which could be. Yeah, okay. It hasn't even tried to start the job yet. Let's see. GitHub status. It'd be a great day to uh, try to make GitHub actions automations when GitHub is ha yeah, <laughs> and when GitHub is halfway down. Any of you who use GitHub um, at a, on a day-to-day -day basis probably have noticed this the last few days. They've been having major issues. We are experiencing delays in action start times and webhook delivery. Our team is actively working on mitigating the issue. Well, great timing. How about that? They say delayed startup time, so maybe it is just a delay. So we're going to go back to uh, the crash to stack build. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go into uh, vterm again. And then we're going to copy this dist folder. Let me build it one more time because I'm kind of a little skeptical that 
it got built correctly. So um, I'm gonna go back into compilation. Let me also clear out the bin folder too. Mm, yes, yes, do that. Yes, and then also, um, is there anything in here? No, we should just delete that. And here we can delete bin also. All, all, thank you. Okay, so now we're gonna try to rebuild this whole thing again. Should build, build the distribution build. Okay, so let's see now if it's in mesh slash dist. Okay, and that seems right. That seems like the right size based on what I expect. So then in vterm, we're going to go down to crash stack. Um, let's remove this old tools folder, make dear tools, copy our mesh dist star to tools, ls tools. All right, so now in uh, tools mesh, this should actually run uh, the compiler, okay? And then we can try to build this project just locally to see w whether it works correctly or not. So I'm gonna go back into the crash stack folder. Actually, we, nah, let's do it this way. Uh, load up project.msc, scheme mode. Make sure everything here looks right. Okay, so these things need to be updated slightly. Uh, process start sync, sync, sync. And another one right here, uh, sync. All right, so process, whoops. Process start, anything else? Nope, that's it. Let's try to run it. So. Uh, Build, dist, config, uh, release. Uh, it's downloading the muzzle tool chain, which honestly, I thought I'd remove that because it's kind of pointless on this right now. Yeah, I did delete, remove it, what the hell? Shouldn't be downloading that. Uh. Undefined variable read all text. Something's not right about that. Let me go into depths, mesh link, compiler. Let's pull again, because I don't know what's going on. Let me also double check what's going on here. Anything starting? Nope. All right. Well. We'll get some of the work done, but we may not be able to get all of it done because GitHub is blocking us. Okay, so um, undefined variable read all text. This seems like, oh, shit. I no longer want to inherit. This did seem to work right though. Um, which one is this? GL. And, um, Oh, I'm not in Geek Shell either. Geek Shell uh, Pure M Manifest. Let's try that one more time the right way, first of all. Yeah, there we go. Looks cooler than CMake. Uh, I, I do like the syntax, but obviously CMake, CMake is way more powerful. Um, bin, boot, no, it's gonna be tools. Okay, so undefined variable read all text. Uh, did I not pull in? Yeah, that's probably what happened. Yeah, I don't have mesh IO here. All right, so let me pull in mesh IO. Actually, let's move that down to be a little bit more in line. Uh, read all text, that should be fine. But I also need to go fix uh, process.c, unfortunately. Let's go into yeah, let's go into crash stack, depths, uh, mesh, compiler, source, uh, process. So we are not going to be inheriting by default. We need to have it set up uh, file descriptors instead. Let's try doing that. And I also need to, no. Now I need to rebuild it, yeah, unfortunately. So let's go back down to 
let's push D. How about that? Push D dot dot mesh. We're going to run. No, compilation, compilation. Let's do it this way. Did it rebuild? Ah, no, I need it. <laughs> let's go into the other repo. This is kind of uh, annoying, but this only is necessary, like having to jump back and forth between these repos is only necessary because I'm working on three different projects at the same time to make this happen. So uh, slightly unfortunate, but whatever. Steps, mesh link, compiler, uh, source, process, inherit right here. Okay, so now we're gonna rebuild it. And then we can go back into vterm and uh, do the same thing again. Pop D, RM, tool, star. Uh, yeah, fine. Re recursive. And then copy R dot dot mesh dist star to tools. Then one more time, let's try to run this. Okay, that's uh, progress. Undefined variable GLFW flags. I think I saw that before. So this is in the Substratic build project. Uh, crash the stack, uh, depths, Substratic engine. And one thing I forgot to mention, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, was that I've split out the Substratic library into its own repo now, and it's also being pulled in as a dependency of crash the stack. So it clones the repo at build time. Um, project MSC. Uh, scheme mode, there is a GLFW flags variable. And let's see, that's coming from, yeah, so I should just basically do that again. Define GLFW flags, and then I'm gonna take the output of this uh, package config function, and then put a GLFW flags here. And that should, do it, I think. That might have worked. That'd be really cool if it did. Let's see. And this is dist, right? So in the dist folder, I don't see a binary. Um, ls, uh, what is it? Bin, release. <laughs> okay, so there's no output binary for some reason. Hmm. Linking crash the stack. Let's check build. Start sync which function is this compile source this is link program which is the one we're looking for i'll put path object files curious why that didn't work let's double check our uh, build status here still not running fantastic yep still not running okay So for some reason, I wonder if the arguments aren't being passed in correctly. Let me double check um, project, not this one. All of this stuff did seem to work. Oh, wait, hold on. These arguments are wrong. Um, yeah, so exclude. C flags, I think is what I called it. Let's go back into build.msc uh, package config, exclude C flags, exclude libs. This one needs to have, um, which is this is include pass, so exclude libs. And this needs to have exclude C flags. Probably doesn't matter, but. And uh, the compiler should have told me that I was using key wrong keywords. Exclude C flags. All right. We'll run it again. I doubt there's gonna be any major difference here. LS bin release. Yeah, no exe. Nothing complains, but we're not seeing, okay, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna put the, um, damn, I have to update that again, won't I? Process.c, uh, we do wanna pass through, well, at least for now, we, we do wanna pass through the standard error I need parameters to this function to make it so that we can, at runtime, say whether you want to inherit the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the file descriptor for standard out, standard error, whatever. 
but I'm just doing it build time right now. We're going to go back into compilation buffer. We're going to rebuild mesh again. Then we're going to go back to V term. Um, we're going to RM RF tools star, and then we're going to copy. All right, let's just use control R copy. We're going to do that. And then we're going to run this one more time. Let's see if we, okay. Uh, okay. We got some errors here. LD cannot find LG GLFW. Yep. So that's why LD is throwing an error. I should be checking the uh, exit code of these processes. Now I can. I didn't actually have that capability before, but now I do. I just haven't done it. Cannot stat. Fine, fine, fine. All right. So I can't find LGLFW. However, package config GLFW3 libs returns that. So why is it not finding it? I wonder if uh, environment variables are not propagating through. So uh, echo LD library path, library path. Yeah. And if I LS this library path, come on now, you go home, please. LS shift insert. Yeah. I think we will see uh, GLFW in there. Yep. Okay. So I wonder if somehow what I'm doing is not actually causing environment variables to be propagated. Let's see, exec VP environment variables from parent process. I don't know how this works. So I need to do it manually, huh? Lovely. Okay. Good to know. Is it the same? Yikes. As a third argument to main, easiest way to discover this is to read the documentation of a system called exec VE. Okay, so there's nothing about parent process here. NP is an array of strings conventionally of the form key equals value, which are passed as an environment to the new program. Both argv and NP must be terminated by a null pointer. Oh boy. Interesting. So for it to, to um, inherit things correctly, I wonder what uh, popen does. Mm, popen source. Because I was using popen before and that was working. Um, glibc, maybe glibc. I could also look at uh, the muzzle source for that. glibc, libio, iop open, no. Uh, let's see what FreeBSD says. Inv. Okay, I see that. Lovely. Okay, they're they're calling it through bin sh apparently. I mean, what I'm basically doing is somewhat re-implementing popen. So that's the reason why I'm looking at the popen source. Uh. environ so that must be getting set somewhere else so environ standard environ get n okay 
environ come on now environ um i'm betting it's being set somewhere else environ uh open bracket okay find env environ okay do they implement get env here yep so get env is looking at all the entries of environ or the name okay Ugh, not what i wanted to be doing right now but uh since you know github is busted we don't really have a choice do we still not running fine set env yeah what i wonder is um How would I even go about that? So uh, C get env. Get env must have access to the environment variables of the process somehow. And this, what header is this in? Standard lib, okay. C, uh, C list environment variables. How about that? There must be a way to do that. Oh, so we have access to that? Okay. My question is, is that going to be... in uh, Ming W. I'll worry about that, that when I get to it though. So there's an environ variable. I might be able to pass that into exec VE. And that does seem to be the one that I want to call, I think. All right, so let me see what, are, what the other um, exec V. Thank you. I just want to get the list of all the exec functions. Exec VPE. I think that's what I want. So I'm already using exec VP. So if I just use exec VPE and I pass in environ, is that enough? Should be the right place. Let's try this out. Um, compilation. All right, so something is not happy here. Undeclared um, environ. Oh, see, even this is mentioned here. That's cool but I don't have access to it. Huh. Now that's interesting to see. Uh, all other exec functions take the environment from the for the new process image from the external variable environment in the calling process. Well, doesn't seem like it unless I'm wrong. Why else would LD not find library because I'm in my environment here. <clears throat> Crap. So exec VP environ. Okay. <clears throat> You need to populate the variable before calling exec LP. Okay, so it's not populated by default. Ah. Interesting. But they say that you can put a third argument on main to grab the environment variables. So let's see if that actually works um, uh, in source main.c we're pulling in unit standard already and then if i go up here care i feel like this would have already had problems if it didn't work anyway 
uh, care arg v care uh, env environ equals env uh, pass along environment variables environ did you mean in underscore underscore environ well let's see whether I meant that or not problem is, excuse me problem is every program would have to do that that doesn't make sense and also let's go back to process.c and take off this exec vpe because um it should just inherit it from the process now environ why is it not working do i have to do this Make e you know in C flags. Do I have to just use X turn to get it in main. It's kind of annoying if so. How about that? All right, let's see. Um, I don't know if it's gonna work. Out of curiosity, let's just try to print this out. Uh, printf env, and we're gonna pull uh, env zero, which, you know, there should be an environment variable if it's real, otherwise it's just gonna crash, which is fine. Oh, how about that? So it does have environment variables after all. Okay, rebuild, <clears throat> and then I'll go back in vterm and do the same thing again. Why am I not getting any, come on. All right, so let's remove the tools. Let's go back and copy the dist again, and then try to run the build. Shit, come on. Okay, here's what we'll do. <clears throat> Out of curiosity, let's print them all. Um, care uh cur env equals env env zero while cur env is not null run f s i just want to get a readout of what environment variables are currently set <coughs> excuse me uh cur env so now i'll go into compilation again run it holy crap that's because i did not uh, advance cur env plus plus what a mess oh haha uh -huh. <clears throat> excuse me fine int i equals zero i could probably do pointer math for this but whatever <clears throat> excuse me env i i plus plus should be a for loop really at this point and i need the final semicolon all right library path cool so library path is there uh <clears throat> excuse me let's get the same thing going in uh the other one then i'm kind of curious if that passes through so we're going to delete the tools. We're going to copy the tools. We're going to run the build again. And library path is also there. Let's double check the library path. Make sure it has what we expect. And GLFW is right there. So let's go back again into process and make sure that exec VP actually doesn't need environ and uh, from what we saw before we actually have to define an x turn for environ for it to show up in your symbols so we're going to do that right here go back to compilation compile it again okay, it didn't like that oh exec vp exec vp it needs to be vpe okay 
and then we'll go back to V term. If this doesn't work, then something else is wrong, and I've just been barking at the wrong tree this whole time. Okay, so same problem. Cannot find L G L F W. Uh, okay, so what I need now is to get the actual um, argument list that um, we're dealing with in here. Ah, great. What the hell did I just do? <laughs> yes, I am barking up the wrong tree indeed. Uh, inherit, um, now I wanna print out the arguments again. We took this out before, but we're gonna put it right back because what else we're gonna do? Arg v, um, arg, arg, that's the one right there. And then printf new line after. Okay, and then we'll go back to compilation buffer. This is way too many steps to keep doing this, but whatever. And then we'll go back into uh, vterm, refresh the tools, run it again. Um, where is it? Didn't write it out, did it? That's not right. Let me just give a little look to this. Oh, okay. So finally, this actually managed to uh, run its build. And we have an artifact here. So it did produce an artifact. That's good. At least that's running again. Okay, fine. How are you doing, GitHub? Still partial outage. Okay, so I don't know why I didn't print the arguments. Should have printed them somewhere else. I think something didn't build right, potentially. Config release. Maybe I just didn't copy it right. Mesh dist tools, ls dist. No, ls uh, tools. Okay. I don't see the arguments being written out. And I should be seeing that because that's what I'm trying to print. Okay, well, how about this? Um, project, crash the stack. No, 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 no. It's gonna be in build, in link program. So I need to write out what this is and see um, what might be going wrong with it. So let's do that. Seriously? Something unexpected is happening. Is it not arm RF uh, bin release? What the hell? I don't know why it's not writing anything. Oh, pff. okay. Let's uh, do this really quick. Uh, we're gonna go into crash, uh, tools, modules. Come on now, modules, mesh, build, uh, link program, and then drop right to here. Paste that in so that we can get a look at what's going on. All right, so GCC, um, LGLFW, you know, it's funny. I mean, we're giving it the direct path 
to link with, and they were saying use it, and it doesn't like it. I don't know why. So it's not even really an environment variable issue, like I thought it was. I think the environment stuff was working fine. Something else wrong is happening. All right, so that's object file. More object files. Um, include paths. And then we get to the library uh, listing. Is that a new line in there? Is that what happened? Oh boy. Didn't consider that possibility. Still not working though. Here, look, let's, let's actually try to do this manually and see if uh, doing it manually causes it to work. Come on. I'll uh, put this in a scratch buffer to clean it up a little bit. I need to take this new line out basically. Then copy it again and then go into uh, vterm and paste it. Syntax error near semicolon. Oh, did I, uh, what? Mesh needs format. Yeah, I do need format. I haven't gotten there yet. I really, really need it though because it's driving me a little bit bonkers not having it. String doing string append every, everywhere sucks for sure. GL. All right. So something is wrong with the, how I'm invoking that process because that worked. So let's actually check it. Bin. Uh, oh, actually, no. LS dist. Copy bin release. Crash stack to dist. Let's just try to run it and see if it works. Crash. Uh, okay, texture load. What was the problem before? We didn't have the right module path. Oh, let's see. LS modules. Yeah. That's right. Okay. I copied the scratch comment. I thought I might have. Okay. Um, so there's a new line in this. And I, I wonder if that has something to do with the fact that it didn't work. Let's try this again. Aha. Uh -huh. <clears throat> mm. No, that didn't work because I, pa I pasted it into the shell. It's different. All right. I need to strip new lines out, I think. Probably what's happening is when I um, launch package config process, it's it's got a new line in the output because that's what was written to the standard out of the process. And I'm not ripping that off. So now that I'm trying to put that together into a, a line to invoke the command, for whatever reason, the new line's causing issues. Should I go and loop through every argument string and replace a new line with uh, space? That's really hacky, but it could work. So let's go to process. And then where we do the arg work. Right here. Oh, so that's why the printing didn't work because I put it in the wrong spot. That explains everything. Okay, so for arg equals string toke, we want to loop through, um, let's see, for int j equals uh, j is less than string length of arg. Eh, I don't have to do that. Let's do this the more straightforward way. Int j equals zero. While, um, come on, too much language switching. Let me get my syntax all jacked up. Okay, um, arg of j is not the null character. Uh, if 
arg of j equals uh, new line, then uh, arg of j equals space instead. Maybe there's another way to do that in C, but this is what we're going to do right now. To do remove... All right, now let's go back into uh, compilation buffer. We're going to rebuild it. Huh. Curious. It, it hangs now because I'm not incrementing J. J++. There we go. And also we're now, we're now seeing the program arguments get passed through linking mesh ah okay that was in build fine so now we'll go back to vterm clear out that folder whoa okay come on let's uh let's get serious here rm control r rm that's the one control r cp that's the one. And then uh, tools. Oh, come on, dude. How's this still happening? Maybe I'm still barking up the wrong tree. I should have write out that I saw one because right now I'm skeptical that it actually did anything. Let's do the dance. Okay. So it saw a new line at this point. And it should have replaced it with a space, but I still see the new line. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We see it because it's in um, this part that I printed out. Okay, so this this is misleading. Let's just delete this line. Well, no. Yeah, we'll delete that one, but we also need to delete the real one, I think, that's in build.msc, this real one. Okay, so let's get this one out of here. So uh, still, for some reason, I can't find glfw and lgl, which makes no sense. Uh, one more time, I'm gonna try to write out the arguments. And this is the right folder this time. So uh, printf, um, s space, arg and I still have the new line print no I do not print F new line go back to compilation rebuild go back to uh, V term I should just have all these in one line together uh, let's see RMRF tools here's what I'll do And then just copy those. That way we can just do this in one little command instead of doing it multiple times. Okay, here we go. Let's run this now. Um, whew. All right, this is now the right set of arguments. Let's get rid of that saw new line stuff because now it's getting in the way. Um, Process.c, saw new line, that's okay. Let's just get that out, take that out. Now we'll go back and rebuild and then rerun. Okay. So 
Oh, it's still there? How's that possible? Is, oh. Possible is like a carriage return? Well, let's tr let's find out. It's possible. Definitely possible. Uh What the hell, dude? Build.msc uh, in to tools. Okay, so that uh, thing that we wrote out before here is not there anymore. So it must be back in process.c. So process.c. Uh, let's see. Uh, printf um, run command. Let's just get all of our nice little uh, printf statements back in the, in the mold here, in the fold. All right. Run command. Okay, now we can see that. Run command. Run command. So this still has that. But, you know, honestly, I don't know why it wouldn't at least catch the GLFW one. I wish I knew what character that was. Because there's something in there that's causing this line to break. And it's not the line length, I don't think. Uh, anything else that I can think of here? Because, uh, you know, making the, the invocation myself works. Like, if I were to go copy all this again, it works just fine. Maybe let's try not linking with GL. If I were to go back into project.msc for substratic... Uh, depth, substratic, engine, project. I'm pulling in uh, GL here. I wonder if it's even needed. Can I find LGF, LGF, GLFW? There's something at the end of that string, I think. Wish I could figure it out. Is the assembled string terminated correctly? Uh, it should be. Because uh, I'm using string toke to split up everything into individual arguments. What you see here is them being split up to individual arguments. So um, I'm, th I'm thinking there must be a control character that's at the very end of that uh, string here that's causing something wrong. Because... I think what's happening is that it's interpreting it as whatever that control character is as part of the LGLFW, and that's confusing uh, LD. So, okay, one last thing we can try here. How about this? If not is alnum arg j, um, then let's just write out whatever it is because something is wrong here. So, um, unknown care. I'm going to write out the, the digit version of it. And then uh, write out arg j. And then we'll see what that does. We'll go back into compilation. Unknown care. So what did I do wrong there? It's not before I increment. It starts at zero. I don't care. Okay. Uh, ASCII 47. Oh, it's because it's a symbol. Uh, should I do like less than A? Is that what I should should, should use instead? So um, let's go back to process.c is alnum. Uh, let's say if argj, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
uh, ASCII table. So the first thing we would see is space. So let's say if it's less than 32. If argj is less than uh, 32, then we're going to do this little check here. It's a forward slash. Yeah, I think um, that one definitely is expected. Compilation. I'm already in the buffer. Okay. Yeah, so nothing got right, written out here, which is good. Let's go back to vterm and try our little invocation again. I mean, holy crap, dude. I just don't get it. Nothing got printed out. How about this? Let's let's put that there. And then redo the thing. Unknown care 10. 10 is a uh, line feed, which is new line. But I'm supposed to be replacing that. And after I do it, Uh, it doesn't show up anymore. So I was right about the new line. Okay. And then if I go back to VTerm and run it again, then I won't get that output anymore because it should have been fixed. Uh, but somehow it still is having the same problem. Is it because there's another space at the end? How do I just eat that character? Ah. I can't put a... Can't put a zero there. I could, just to make it work, but that's going to be really bad. Uh, let's, let's try that, huh? What if we do that? Uh, did it do something? I think it did something. Yeah, it worked, I think. No, let's take that out because that would tell us for sure. And also uh, delete, let's see, RM, RF, bin, release. Let's just check and see if it rebuilds. That it went back in disk, so it must be in bin release. Okay, it worked. Temporary hack is always good. Well, it's good for unblocking this, but now like we're finished with the stream. <laughs> and I can't even use the hack that I made to, to make progress. Uh, man, what a mess. So that was kind of a... I'm not going to say it's a failure, but it was... A lot of unnecessary stuff happening. I really don't know why. Well, okay. I can't say I don't know why. I do know why spaced error is not right. Because it expects the argument has exactly the number of characters. And no extra space at the end. When you're passing arguments in this way. So that extra space. Even though I was removing the new line putting a space instead. Even that was not a fix. The only fix is actually using a null terminator. And the the right fix for this whole thing in the end is to have a function, which I probably should have just done this already. I've been wasting our time um, when I could have just written a, a function that trims white space off the end of a string. So if I just trim the white space off the end of the string, then we would have skipped this whole problem. So uh, the reason why I didn't do that is because I was trying to get to the bottom of why it was happening before going to the right solution. So I don't know. We figured it out now. So at least I feel satisfied knowing why this happened. Because... Uh, if I ever see this kind of problem again, I'll know exactly what to do. Okay, so where we ended up here is that at least Mesh Build was able to build um, the project from scratch. Let me let's just do it one more time. I want to I want to show you that it works from scratch using only Mesh Build, no Bootstrapper script uh, for Crash the Stack. Uh, we'll take this line out. I want clean output. Um, also, let's see, run command, that should be not getting written anymore. Also, the main file, let's take this uh, 
writing of the environment variables out. I don't think we need this. In fact, I don't think we need that. Well, okay, let me let me double check that assumption before I move further. We're gonna do a couple things really quick here just to close things out. Uh, okay, that looks fine. Why am I seeing this output? Hmm. Did I not take out the, oh, right, okay. Let's go back into process uh, right there. All right, cool. And then back into vterm. Uh, CP cannot stack. Yeah, that's fine. I don't know why it doesn't find that though. Depths. Uh, crash. Depths. Substratic engine modules. The folder exists. I don't get it. Modules. Depths. Substratic engine modules. There's something wrong with how I'm formulating the line. Depths, substratic engine, modules. Dist modules. Huh. Okay, we'll have to look, think about that another time, but uh, that's what I'll do. How about this? Substratic. Let's run it and see if it works. Star isn't expanded. It's not a normal shell. That's a literal process. Thank you, Zacchaeus. That's, I think you're right about that. Yeah, because it's not, we're not running it through bin SH, so we're not getting globbing for free. Uh, all right, one last thing here. Let's just run that. Boom, that works. Let's actually check the dist. Um, dist, crash the stack and see if it runs. Window was not initialized. Cannot create GLFW window. Oh, fail. Okay, yeah. Let's go back um, into project. We got we to gotta finish this thing with the game actually running after a full build. So engine, I think this line needs to come back into play. So let's do that. I think I need to also remove uh, release and also depths, substratic, engine, bin, release. So I can rebuild everything effectively. Okay, and then we'll run disk, crash the stack, undefined variable texture load. And that was once again, a problem of not resolving, Wait, hold on. Dist modules substratic. Yeah, it's there. Um, Main.c. Source main.c. Dev substratic engine modules slash modules. Okay, so this is not a dev build. So it should be pulling the modules folder path correctly. I probably need to do some path resolution on that. Okay, well, the game may not run because I just need to like do like a little bit of extra work here. I don't have time for that. So what I wanted to do at the end here is to just go, well, we just did it, didn't we? We ran the build program and it built everything from scratch. So um, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to see it actually pull the dependencies down and everything. So crash the stack, uh, depths, uh, mesh compiler. I just want to make sure that there's no stuff here that needs to be checked in. Um, yeah, that stuff is not part of what we're doing here. And then in Substratic Engine, uh, Project MSC, define GLFW flags. Okay, we do want to check that in. So I'm gonna update this. All right, so let's see. Uh, pull uh, GLFW args uh, correctly. And I'll push that too, because we need to have it. Ah, all right. One more thing. I'm going to set the remote. The u uh, get at github.com substratic slash engine. Then push to origin master. That's done now. So now I can go and delete this depths folder. All right. 
So no more, no more depths folder. We don't have uh, our dependencies pulled down. I'm going to delete the bin folder as well. So now this is more or less what it's like when we clone it. Although, also, this compiler folder, I think that can be, go away. Come on. Stop. What are you doing? Uh, yeah. So delete compiler. Now, I'm going to run uh, the full build program right here. This is actually running uh, the mesh build that we have that we just built from the other repo. So tools slash mesh build dist config release. Uh, the dist folder is gone too, right? No, it's there. Let's delete that too. Okay, so no distributables, no nothing. So just run it. It's going to clone dependencies. Uh, oh, now it's going to download muscle tool chain. Let's wait for that to happen for a minute. And that's happening because the the mesh compiler library has it as a dependency, which is going to change because it doesn't need to have that. Uh, it, it should just take whatever the compiler is for the program that's compiling the library. So we'll fix that at some point soon. But uh, hopefully this will finish in a second. Then it will continue with the process of building the program. What I ended up deciding is that the... Uh, the game itself probably won't use muscle to statically compile the binary because there's so many other dependencies that it really just doesn't matter uh, and dependencies that can't easily be statically linked. Uh, but for the mesh compiler binary, it does make sense because eventually what I want is there for there to be a single statically linked uh, mesh binary that you can just download and run directly on your computer. Uh, that, that should be pretty fun. If you've ever used the Zig language before, Zig has a compiler binary like that. And I thought that was a pretty cool idea. So I wanted to uh, steal that and replicate it. All right, come on now. Taking forever to fetch this, probably also unpacking it. Let's see what's happening in uh, proc ed. Um, do we see? Okay, gzip is unpacking. So it should be done in a moment. Uh, in depths. Okay, they're both there, compiler, depths. Yeah, we are unpacking right now. And this muscle and this also both can just get deleted. Yes, all, yes. Come on now, how long does it take? Uh, Compiler depths. I wonder if there's something wrong with that invocation. Well, since the, the folder is already there, I'm just going to kill this. Whatever. And then I'm going to run it again because it's going to skip that part now. It's still downloading it? Why? The folder exists. Oh, I never did. Okay. Sorry, folks. Depths. We're going to rename that to uh, muscle. And then we're going to run it again. Just to skip this problem for now. Okay, so now it's compiling everything. Uh, Substratic library, the uh, mesh compiler binaries. And then it's going to link everything up. And now in dist slash crash the stack, you could run that. And it's going to give us that uh, undefined variable again because it's not loading the module path correctly. But it does build everything uh, from scratch. So I'm pretty happy with how this is working right now, even though there are bugs here and there. And uh, that's sort of the basis going forward uh, for building the game on CI and then having that dist folder ready to be used for pushing um, packages to itch.io using Butler. So uh, I'm going to finish that whole automation process off stream because we're not going to spend another stream poking around with this. Uh, but I will show you how it works on the next stream next week. And then uh, next week, we'll continue working on game logic for Crash the Stack so that you can actually download a build of the, of the game and try it as we're starting to add this functionality in. Maybe we'll also have uh, Windows support too. So if you're using Windows, maybe you can download a Windows build, but that's probably going to be less likely because it's going to take a bit of work to get that uh, working. So we'll see how it goes next week. But anyway, thanks so much, folks, for being here today uh, and uh, watching me struggle through figuring out what's going on wrong with all this stuff. Maybe it was a little bit interesting. I don't know. There's a lot of little issues here and there to, to figure out. So... Uh, also, I'm happy to say the stream did not go down, and I'll tell you why. OBS had a problem, and I installed a new update, and I think it fixed it. So, fingers crossed, fingers crossed that it doesn't happen again. So, anyway, uh, thanks a lot, folks. Hope you all have a great weekend, and uh, we'll see you again on Tuesday back here at the same time, same place. Until then, keep it creative. See ya.